I'll ask the guys to come and join me here in a minute. But first we'll, um, we'll review a uh, little memory work. Who's got one? Did, can you hear me back there in the back row? <laughs> Marianne, please. Hebrews 10, 36 for you. Uh, what's another rendering for that word patience? Perseverance. Perseverance. Who else? Endurance. Constancy. Consistency. Steadfastness. Persistence. Those are all uh, synonymous. Uh, when you're reading in the King James translation, patience, and the, uh, anybody remember the Greek word? It was that, uh, yeah. Yep. We, we covered it, didn't we? Yeah. Yep. Yep, good. Hupomune. What's that? Pardon me? Sam said when news, and then he said. Okay. <laughs> No. No. Hupo mone. Yes. Yep. Yep. Ab abiding. Abiding under. Bearing under. Yep. Abiding. The meno is the abiding part, isn't it? Bearing. And hupo is under. So we bear up under, don't we? Yep. And again, that's a, that would be a compound that would uh, give us a, 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 an understanding in English uh, what we're talking about. Because uh, patience is not just waiting, is it? No. Nope. Nope. It's perseverance sounds like you're up against some pressure, some opposition, some resistance. And that's what that word speaks of. So we're going to, to persevere. After you've, you've done the will of God, you receive the promise. Amen? Who else has one? One of the verses. Bryson? Were you, you going to? Okay, I saw your hand move. <laughs> Dangerous thing to do. When I'm looking for a show of hands, man, you rub your eyes, you rub your nose, itch your ears, something like that, I'm calling on you. Who else? Jim? Sure. We gave an old man scripture, didn't we? Yep. Yep. That's it. Old men are to be sober and sound in the faith. Right? Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Okay. What did we talk about this morning? Serious sin. Serious sin. That's right. And which, was it? which ones are the serious ones? Yeah, you got it. You got it. You're paying attention. James chapter 4, verse 17 will be one of the memory verses for this week. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. This is not, as we said, just, uh, okay, you know, do the right thing, uh, that, which is um, uh, in our culture uh, very subjective, isn't it? Yeah. With God, it's not subjective. God is the ultimate objective reality, isn't he? And truth is found in him. If he says it's right, it's right. If he says it's wrong, it's wrong. And there's no darkness in him, no shadow of turning. God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. None whatsoever. So we bear that in mind. And you know to do good, you've got, you have, if you're born again, you've got God's spirit within you. If you're doing something that God doesn't want you to do right now, and you don't know that it's something that he doesn't want you doing, well, uh, you wouldn't be guilty before him, would you? No. But if he identifies that you're doing something that you shouldn't be doing, or, yes, in the alternative, if he identifies that you're not doing something that you should be doing, and you fail to respond with obedience, one way or the other, then that's sin. If God says this is what we should be doing and we're not doing it, it's sin. If God tells us to stop doing something that we are doing and we persist in doing it, it's sin. Amen? Amen. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. The other one will be the Ecclesiastes <clears throat> verse that we finished up with this morning. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 11. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Ecclesiastes 8, 11. Uh, God's not mocked, is he? That's pretty plain. Amen? Get one by on God. Uh, slip one by him. See, uh, look the other way. Parents will do that from time to time. You know, they, they correct their kid and they corrected him again and, and straighten him up on this and then 
Uh, I'll get it next time. Parents will do that sometimes, right? Yep, I've spoken to it. I've spoken to it again, spoken to it. But uh, uh, God doesn't give us a pass ever. No. He's holy. Amen. There's, there's no, no unrighteousness in him. And he requires of us holiness. He doesn't just let it slide. We have those expressions. Those aren't found in the Bible, are they? No. no. He just lets you slide. It's got great on the curve. Got great on the curve. Part of the group gets you in, part of a good, good holy group, and so you know you'll, uh, your grade is brought up because others around you are doing what they should be doing. Hmm. Not that way. We'll all stand before the judgment seat of Christ, won't we? And give an account for the things that have been done in our bodies. Hallelujah. Yes, we could come on up and rearrange the furniture here. The topic that we discussed at our home fellowship group meeting was Christian fight. the Christian fight. That's right. Thank you, Jim. Anybody else? We talked about fighting the good fight of faith. It's a fight of faith, isn't it? Yep, takes on a lot of different forms. It's not with flesh and blood. No? Unless you're talking about your own flesh and blood. Yeah. Got to fight, fight uh, resist the temptation to uh, sin. Uh, the temptation is in our members, isn't it? Yep, it is. Uh, we fight the good fight of faith, and we lay hold on eternal life. Uh, there are I think we took some time. We commented out briefly. There's commented briefly how there are plenty of occasions in the scripture. Thanks, guys. Where uh, <clears throat> God admonishes us to do something, tells us of the the benefits of doing so. Uh, maybe warns us against doing something. Uh, <clears throat> uh, warns us of the consequence of not doing that that thing. Uh, we're not necessarily um, always given the alternative. Uh, he says, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life. Reasonable to say that if you're not fighting the good fight of faith, you don't have an assurance of laying hold on eternal life? Hmm? God's logical. And those, uh, that approach to reason is, is presented in numerous occasions in the scripture. So to read a passage of scripture such as that one in Timothy... Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life. And to consider that if I am not fighting the good fight of faith, I have no assurance of laying hold on eternal life. That's the way God thinks. That is the way he communicates. And that's, um, that's the way he operates, too. Yeah, that's the way he does things. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. Guys, why don't you come on up and, um, and join me mm -hmm. as we talk. Uh, I ask the guys to, you know, at the meetings, you all come prepared to the to the home fellowship group meetings, ready to speak to things that stood out to you from the teachings. And I asked these guys that we'd start that same way in these uh, panel discussions following the teaching, following the home fellowship group meetings, that they'd, uh, they'd just come and share with you all some of the things that stood out to them from the teaching. Uh, not necessarily what was going on in the meetings themselves, those, though there's very commonly uh, occasion to speak to that because you all bring up some, some uh, great points, some, some real good truths, ways in which uh, it's a blessing to me uh, to hear of the things that, uh, that uh, you're hearing and that the Holy Spirit is impressing upon you. The Christian walk is a fight. It's not a picnic. It isn't. It's not just a parade. It's not just a, a fun in games. Life and death is in the balances. God took our redemption so seriously that he sent his son Jesus Christ to die on our behalf. Wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. That sounds like a fight, doesn't it? Yeah? And while our fight is not a fight to add to the redemptive work of Jesus. No, ours is a fight of faith. Our tendency is to go astray, like we were mentioning there from that, that passage in Hebrews 3 this morning, right? They departed from the living God, mm -hmm. didn't they? Yeah. yeah? Through unbelief, a failure, a refusal to believe what God had said regarding his care for them, 
his provision for them. Well, our fight is to draw on the grace of God. You know, we didn't get to, to the passage there in Romans 6 uh, where it says, sin shall not have dominion over you. But many, if not most of you, would be familiar that that is the, the teaching of the scripture. Sin does not have dominion. Amen. Romans 6, of course, starts out talking of how uh, continuing sin is, is contrary to your very nature. And, you know, if, if uh, Lord wills, we'll take some time on there and I'll uh, just uh, wade into that ever so briefly. But it, it, uh, we are asked, uh, how shall we that are dead to sin continue any longer therein? And uh, he talks about our nature. Uh, it's, it's inconsistent with our nature to, to, to sin. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Well, I know I'm sort of uh, linking this morning's topic with the teachings that we did on the fight of faith, but it should be applicable. Mm -hmm. yeah. You deal with sin. And there are plenty that would profess Christianity uh, that would say, can't help myself. Mm -hmm. Really can't, you know, God knows, nobody's perfect. We really can't help sinning. And sure, if we're going to deal with that, that statement at face value, it is true. You cannot help yourself, right? But you're not limited to your own resources. We're not, are we? No. Through the exercise of faith, we can draw on God's help, can't we? So we can't help ourselves, but we can go to God and get his help to not sin, to stop sinning. And that's a fight. Amen. It's a fight, one, to believe it, that it's possible. You mean I can really stop sinning in this area of my life? I can really trust God and he'll be there for me? Yes. Yeah. If it's consistent with his will, there's help from above to pull it off. Mm -hmm. Do you believe this? Mm -hmm. I tried, I tried. I didn't ask if you had tried. I asked if you believed what's written in the scripture. My grace is sufficient. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Amen? Amen. That's, that is, I love the way it's put there. You know, just, it, it's, uh, that, that those truths would be coupled. Okay? So God made the heavens and the earth. So let's talk about the magnitude of your problem. Right? How big's your problem? We're talking about the one who made heaven and earth. Okay, now, now what have you got? Amen? And that's what the psalmist writes. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, if you believe that, then you're sure not going to take the position that some little old sin that you're struggling with is too big. For God, in you, it's Christ in you, which is your hope of glory. Amen? Christ in us, our hope of glory. So, uh, fighting the good fight of faith. Yeah, let's listen to what some of these guys have to share on the subject. Just continuing on that thought, and you mentioned it a couple minutes ago also. It is important to keep in mind who we're fighting against. Um, and so often it's our flesh. Sometimes Christians are kind of quick to um, throw the devil's name in there. Oh, there's just the devil that's the problem. The devil is a big problem. He is the enemy of our souls. Um, but a lot of times the devil gets blamed for stuff that he can't really rightly be blamed for. Mm -hmm. and, more, and more immediately, we know that he was very involved in bringing sin into the world there's a good brother in the Lord uh, that, that we talk about once in a while, and um, he's become a little known in my thinking for doing this, where, you know, he's going about daily business, and he'll tell, tell us how things are going in the ministry, and, you know, we had a problem, there was a leak in the roof, and it was just a demonic oppression. And, you know, then we, we were driving to share the gospel with somebody, and we got a flat tire, and Satan was opposing us. And... 
it's not necessarily the devil that, you know, snuck around behind your car and popped the tire or that uh, put a leak in the roof or maybe bringing it a little closer to what we're talking about. Uh, we do have a flesh that lusts against the spirit, like Galatians 5 says. And that's, that's important to keep in mind. There is a real devil, and we are to resist him steadfast in the faith. And so I'm not minimizing the, the devil's effectiveness, but it's important for us to, to take a look at our own hearts. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, Paul said of himself, I'm the chief of sinners, right? Mm -hmm. Christ died to save sinners of whom I am chief. In Jeremiah 17, the Bible says that the heart is deceitful above all things, desperately wicked. Who can know it? And so a big part of the fight of faith is fighting against these uh, lusts and temptations that we deal with in our own flesh. Mm -hmm. And we need to be willing to square up to that and cry out to the Lord for help and just recognize, Lord, I'm the problem in this situation. That's an important part of the fight is to not look at other people or the circumstances, but understand that, yep, I'm the problem here. And, and we cry out to the Lord for help and we do fight the good fight of faith. We take the sword of the spirit, the word of God. We hold up the shield of faith. We cry out to our heavenly father and he will help. The righteous cry, like we had that verse from Psalm 34 as a memory verse a few weeks ago, the righteous cry, the Lord hears. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. Those two, I kind of mix them, 15 and 17, I think, from Psalm 34. But both are true. When we do call out to the Lord, he does hear us. Mm -hmm. um, but it's important to keep in mind that the flesh lusts against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh. We shouldn't be too proud or try to defend ourselves or our reputation just own it and say, yep, I'm in a fight right now, and a big part of it is me. I'm the problem, and the Lord will give us the grace as we ask him for it. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I know as the teaching began uh, the, from the Second Timothy passage, it says, add to your faith, and then it gives you things to add to the faith, but it doesn't say something before the faith because it assumes that you've made Jesus your, your Lord and Savior, that you've received that gift of faith. I think of passage from Abraham. He believed God and was accounted him for righteousness. He had faith in God. So it, it says, start with the faith of God that you've received, not of your own selves. Galatians talks about that. The life that I live in the faith is by the faith of the Son of God who gave mm -hmm. himself for me. Not of, not of works, so they mentioned both. Ephesians 2, 8. But we start with that. Am I a Christian? Have I accepted through faith the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ? Start with that. You know, I have. We were in our home group on Friday, and you just make, make the announcement across the room, all of us have accepted that gift of faith, which has allowed us to be here in the first place. This is not just open to anybody who drives by my house and says, hey, look, there's lights on. Let's go and knock in. Can we come in and sit down and enjoy you folks? No. But this is a case where these are people who have made that commitment of their lives to the Lord by faith. And now, having done that, that first work, the work completed by Christ in our hearts, now we begin to add trusting in him. Mm -hmm. Amen. One of the big um, arenas in which we fight, and we talked about it some at our meeting, is in the realm of the mind. And maybe we mm -hmm. could flip over there to 2 Corinthians again, chapter 10, just mm -hmm. to put our eyes on it together. Verse 3, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, they're not natural, physical, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having in readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Sharing personally... That would be a big one for me when we talk about fighting the good fight of faith and the Christian fight. Um, a lot of it for me is in the realm of the mind. I, you know, I say it sometimes, uh, things, things get noisy up here for me. <clears throat> sometimes it's from all different directions. Um, 
I'm, I'm bothered, troubled, upset about things in other people, things in circumstances that you couldn't just attach directly to a person, and then also things in my own life. I could look at myself and say, man, I'm a mess, and you get it all at once. Is there anybody else that has some of those things? Um, <clears throat> and it's, it's very important to do both. We talk about it a lot, put off and put on. We need to hold up the shield of faith, like Ephesians 6 talks about, and quench the fiery darts of the devil. It, we laugh at it. None of us have ever been hit by a literal dart from the devil. You know, something sticks you in the butt, and you're like, who was that? And there it was. It was the devil. You know, he shot one into your tire and shot one into you. That, that doesn't happen. So, okay, where is it? It is in the realm of the spirit and the mind that we're talking about. Um, we have thought of introducing fiery darts into the afternoon service to keep people awake, but we, that idea was shot down by the board. Um, anyway, the... Water cannons. Yeah, water cannons. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, in my mind, sometimes I, it's just it very regularly and seemingly very easily goes in the wrong places. Um, the Bible talks about all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. Those thoughts are constantly um, bombarding our minds. Again, your flesh wants to have its lusts gratified, and we live in a world system where everywhere you look, those, uh, that message, those messages are being propagated and, and fed into us through our eyes and our ears. And a lot of times you're just going through the daily business, and especially when your mind gets a little bit of free time, the, the thoughts can rush in and, oh yeah, I, I want this, and you're right away uh, maybe dealing with thoughts of discontentment or covetousness, or maybe you tend to worry, you know, like, what if this happens, and what if this happens, and, um, <clears throat> you know, I've had to deal with it even just recently, um, and I am definitely decades away from claiming any of these uh, old man verses, but, you know, like, What's this? There's, did that, you know, little lump or spot used to be there? And what if it grows into this cancer and I'm going to be dead before I can finish this thought? And I didn't even have time to make my last will and testament. And you're uh, stop. And we need to cast down the imaginations and the things that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God because very quickly you're into, yeah, worrying or covetousness or lust of all kinds of things. And um, it's, a, it's a fight. We were talking also some on Friday of how it's not enough to just think, you know, I'm not going to think that. I'm not going to think that. Sometimes, personally, I think I'm almost like the little kid with, that just tries to put his fingers in his ears and say, da-da-da-da-da, I'm not listening to you. And that's not the way we fight. We're to fill our mind with the things that are true and honest and just and praiseworthy with the Word of God. And you, you got to fight back and start quoting scriptures and singing songs, worshiping the Lord. But that was a good aspect of the teaching, to be reminded of the fight. And that thing that Dad said last Sunday, I believe it was, some of us are taking a whipping. I take a whipping too much, too often from the devil slash flesh um, because I'm not actively filling my mind with the things that are true, honest, just, uh, praiseworthy, lovely, pure, good report. So um, that was a good thing to be reminded of that, hey, there's a big fight that goes on in a realm that's not seen. It's in the realm of the mind, in the spirit realm, and it's imp you better be fighting or you're going to be getting whipped. Do you recognize that the, uh, the battleground is to a very great degree uh, in the realm of the thoughts? The, the scripture uh, reveals that uh, the devil comes along. We looked at the passage there in Genesis 3. Yea, has God said. And in those temptations that are of, of the Lord, as they're recorded there in the Gospels, the devil comes along and he says, it's written, if thou be the son of God, 
and, and he quotes scripture, doesn't he? He's talking to him. Yeah. Did, does the devil come with, um, yeah, with, a, with a, a tank or a nuke or, you know, to blow you away? No, he comes with thoughts, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. yeah. Things that are contrary to the word of God. Well, Jim was talking, I just went to the passage over there in Genesis 6. In the days of Noah, God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Mm -hmm. so that's, that's the uh, evil of Noah's day. Got that? Mm -hmm. Every imagination of the thoughts of his heart, evil continually. And in order to win this fight, we need to be on the offensive Amen. and meditating on God's word and hiding his word in our heart and, uh, and uh, keeping his word ever upon our lips mm -hmm. and keeping in communion and prayer and preaching the gospel. It's his, his word that is the offensive weapon that we use. There's the defensive weapons. Yes, the shield of faith with which we quench the fiery darts, but we need to be applying the word of God actively to our situations and fighting. And that's, again, that's just, that takes an effort, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It does, yeah. to keep the word ever before our eyes. Mm -hmm. yep. It's a fight, and it's one that's worth fighting, mm -hmm. worth fighting. And also, don't, don't make your flesh strong. It's gonna make the fight harder, unnecessarily. When you recognize, um, ways, areas of your life that you are struggling, uh, exercise self-control and abstinence in those things. We were talking about it, Steve mentioned it a minute ago, um, and it was the same thing for me. Uh, there have been a couple times in recent years where I've, you know, gotten a little bit into the news and, you know, you watch things, the, the political news headlines, and they never make me feel calm and happy. <laughs> you know, like, you're like, man, things are bad, but, but maybe, maybe all the good guys will win. And then they don't all win. You're like, oh, this is no good. We're, we're headed for trouble and things like that. Sometimes you just need to turn off the news. Mm -hmm. And um, my listening to it, I feel sometimes almost like, well, if I listen to it, that'll help it go the right way. <laughs> and it doesn't really work that way. Sort of like the weather. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> Like, what's the weather going to be tomorrow? Like, the more you look at it, the nicer it's going to get. Not really. It's still going to rain. Um, and, you know, if there are those things, like, man, every time I come in on... Yeah. <laughs> every time I come in on Sunday morning, I've just... All I can see, I try to pray or close my eyes and worship the Lord, and I just see the movie that I was watching last night or the sports score that I was watching last night. You know, if it's a real struggle, then try turning it off. And mm -hmm. I pick on a few easy examples, but just the basic point is part of the fight is being wise enough, smart enough, sober, and vigilant enough to know that, hey, if, if this thing that I'm doing is causing trouble for me, if it's sown to the flesh and, and giving me a hard time keeping my mind on the Lord, then I'm not going to keep filling Good my enough. mind with that. And, and that could be a practical help. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> As Pastor Jim sort of summarized, um, I appreciate the <laughs> edited version of my uh, situation there. But, but as he mentioned, number two on, on the list of things was virtue, resolve. A resolve to fight against these things as God brings them to our, our attention. Mm -hmm. Because we don't know what's going to distract us every, every minute of the day, but um, the cares of the world will come in, as the Bible says. But again, this is where that trust in the Lord to show us Pastor mentioned this morning by being sensitive to the things that the Lord would bring to your attention. This is out of order. This needs to go. And as it pertains to the situation regarding the election results, I've never been one involved in that. But for some reason this year, I was very involved. I mean, very involved. And that, that's an oversimplification of it. But one thing as we were preparing for home group, I asked the Lord, Lord, what do you see that's out of order? I've asked for your virtue, your Christian energy to show me those things that need to change, mm -hmm. and then give me the knowledge, which is the next word, to know what they are and to lay them aside if necessary, cause them to decrease or go. And the Lord faithfully showed me that 
For me, at that time, the election results were a secret fault. And as Pastor talked this morning, fault. Okay, that's an easy word to accept. That's a fault. I'll just be nicer. No, that's sin. And I was required to repent of that sin. And it was interesting because the results came on yesterday. And I was flipping channels. And it was as if someone had put an electrical shock in my hands. I was just very sensitive to don't even stop at that channel. Just keep going. And is, am I ever going to look at an election result again? I don't know. But for this time, the Lord exposed that as something that was completely vexing to me and needed to be put aside completely. Mm -hmm. Not delayed or rationed, gone. And um, again, I was thankful for that because we look for the knowledge, we purpose in our hearts to do what the Lord has to do by virtue. Mm -hmm. Christian energy, resolve, diligence. And we ask him, Lord, I don't know your ways. Teach me your ways. And if I've committed sin, I will go do this no more. And he will show us those ways that need to be changed. And then we change them and move forward. And if it means completely gone, <coughs> it's completely gone. Mm -hmm. And I'm thankful for that because God is faithful to expose those things in our hearts. Amen. Mm -hmm. yep. We, um, we talked, of course, of exing our, exercising ourselves to develop Self-control, didn't we? Yeah. yeah, temperance is self-control. And there are some things that, that are part of our lives that uh, are necessary parts of our lives but still need to be tempered. Uh, and then there are other things that have no business being a part of our lives. And those we cut off. We, make no, we give them no place. We make no provision for our flesh by uh, uh, indulging ourselves with, uh, with involvement in those things. There are some things that maybe... Uh, are in between there. There are some things that are, that are, are, uh, are lawful, but the manner in which we engage in them, um, no, un unlawful, because we've taken them to an, an excess. I'm not going to sit here uh, and say that, uh, that a man is, is always in sin for uh, uh, looking at the news. No, no. Uh, I don't think we would find a basis for that in Scripture. But if, if um, we're looking at the news... Uh, when we should be doing something that God has told us to be doing, now we're over into sin, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Yep, and it's out, of, it's out of place, and we need to exercise the self-control to be able to push the button, click, turn it off. And yeah, sometimes we just say, hey, this has been too much of a problem, too often, mm -hmm. I'm going to cut it off. Maybe cut it off for, for a permanence, maybe cut it off for a season. I talked with one recently, and they said that they're fasting, mm -hmm if you will, they're, they're foregoing any uh, social media involvement for the, for the month. That's, you know, okay, if, if, if they would recognize it in their own life or maybe to, to pair up with somebody else. Sometimes we do that, don't we? Mm -hmm. Hey, listen, we're going to do this together. And in order to be a, a benefit to somebody else, you say, hey, listen, uh, let's not do this uh, for a certain time period or we're going to commit to doing this together for a certain amount of time in the interest of breaking a bad habit or an unhealthy way or establishing a good way. We talk about uh, uh, good habits or godly ruts, don't we? Yep. yep. Ex exercising ourselves under godliness, making straight paths for our feet. Well, that's, that's uh, all involved in self-control, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Sure it is. And uh, it's a fight to do so. Fight to do so. Try losing five pounds. Right? Try losing five pounds. Think, oh, yeah, you do that, no problem. Yeah. Try it. Yeah, and we, um, uh, we find that it's a, it's a fight, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What else? Just another uh, one from the list there in Second Peter was patience, perseverance. Um, and I appreciate the reminder of that and the, the words that you were going over at the start of the afternoon here, steadfastness, um, some of the other ones. Endurance. Flip over, yeah, endurance, mm -hmm. constancy. Yeah, Flip over Romans 2. That's a verse that we stopped at in the teaching. It's good to put our eyes on it together. Verse 6, speaking of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds, 
to them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, you could insert there, to them God will render eternal life. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, and that idea of patient continuance or persevering in what we know is right is, mm -hmm. is just always a good reminder for us. I, I think I've recognized it some in my life where I am just wanting to rest some and sort of take a break and it, the thinking can become, and sometimes it's almost subconscious, you know, I've, I've been doing well for a while. That's always bad when you hear that voice. When you hear that, run. Um, you know, but yeah, I have been in this good habit for a while. I've, I always share the gospel with people. So, you know, this opportunity... I'm just going to slack off and take the easy way out or save some time here. I've been in a good long-standing habit of getting up in the morning and uh, spending time with the Lord. So I think I, I deserve a little break and I can just take less and get a little extra sleep. Or I've been, you know, staying after my friend a lot. I've been the guy that's held the standard high and reproved and rebuked and exhorted. And now that I see this thing in his life, I just don't really feel like um, enduring the confrontation again right now. So I think I'll just slack off. And that is not the voice of the Holy Spirit telling us that. It's your flesh and or the devil, like we've been saying. Um, and the Lord encourages us to perseverance, to continuance, steadfastness, constancy, what you've been doing. If, why, why were you doing it in the first place? Well, because I believe that's what the Lord wanted me to do. Mm -hmm. And how long do you think he wants you to do that? And do you think that's him telling you to take a break? Yeah, that person, that friend doesn't need to be encouraged right now. That soul doesn't need to hear the gospel right now. I don't need you in my presence right now. When you put it that way, that's not the voice of the Lord, is it? Um, it's Almost all the time, if not all the time, it's just my flesh that's lusting against the spirit, like we were saying a minute ago, and thinking, you know, I'm tired of fighting. I, I don't want to fight anymore. And we need to say, Lord, help me, and get back in the ring. So that, that was a good reminder there of perseverance. <clears throat> Comes to mind years ago, uh, and you could imagine I trusted... Um, in dealing with people's lives. Uh, you, you hear a lot of different uh, and sometimes novel perspectives on uh, biblical truths. There was this, uh, this, this gal uh, who, in talking with a the deacon there, was explaining that, um, that the Lord was setting them free. They had been in bondage to diligence. Yep. Me, me too. Yeah, I know. I see these puzzled looks. Yeah. They felt that they had really been just too diligent. It's like saying just, you know, too consistent, too, too steady and steadfast. And they were, they, they, they found it that they were in bondage to that. Yep. Yep. That's a confused soul. <laughs> yeah, we don't take breaks from holiness. Or we don't take breaks from uh, loving God with our all, do we? Like, and I'm just in bondage to, to purity. <laughs> no. It's a fight. And the flesh will use any means whatsoever to get a break. Anything to get a break. Came out to church. And I, I use church because you're church people. I mean, I'm talking to the people who come to church. You know, but, but you'd sit there and, you know, we got some people who take a break because oh, I, I feel to take a break and they're going to make a trip to the bathroom. You know, get up and I, I think I got to go to the bathroom. Take a break. <laughs> you know, people got their phones. Some people will take a break from listening uh, to... Check email. You know, something important might have happened in the world while, while uh, I've been here at church and I don't want to miss out. Take a little break. Uh, should I go on? Use a few more examples? Ah, you know. 
You know what I'm talking about. Take breaks from, from your, your time with the Lord in prayer. Hey, I've been on my knees for, look at this, two, almost three minutes now. I need a break. I, de I deserve a break. Yeah. And uh, in these areas of fighting, remember that the, the devil, he doesn't have to take a rest, does he? Nope. He goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And if he sees your guard is down, I mean, uh, Jesus in the wilderness, again, I'll refer to it. Uh, does the devil know that people need to eat? Does he? Mm -hmm. Does he have the ability to see that the Son of Man has been out there for 40 days mm -hmm. without a bite to eat? Yep. And so what's he going to come and talk to him about? He knows our places where we would be potentially vulnerable. And not only generally, but he'll get to know you. He'll get to know you. Do you have buttons? Mm -hmm. Do you have some buttons? Yeah. Devil will learn how to push him. He'll learn what those buttons are, and he'll, know how to, he'll learn how to push them. He'll see what, what works. We've talked before, a little bit different context, <clears throat> but uh, uh, the Lord calls Christians to be fishers of men, right? Uh, a fisherman knows what to use as bait if he's interested in catching uh, catching a fish, right? Knows how to get the fish. Well, the devil knows how to get people. He's been at it for a long time. And I would say he's been rather effective, rather successful. He knows the nature of people, Christians included. Your flesh didn't get saved. Your flesh didn't get altogether cleaned up, did it? No, no. Your flesh still has sin in its members. And the devil knows how to play upon it. And in order to walk in victory, we must fight the good fight of faith. And if you take a break, the devil's more than ready to take advantage of you with your helmet off and the shield down and the breastplate. Well, where did I put that again? And uh, yeah. You just look like somebody with a big old target painted on them. Yeah, real easy. Real easy take there. Sure. A couple of us were talking recently, and sometimes it can, it can seem to you, to me, that, um, boy, I'm not, I'm not really in a big fight right now. Things seem to be going pretty well, pretty easy. And it's important to understand that the things, the principles that we're hearing, they're not just for the future, like, okay, if things get really bad and they're persecuting Christians like they do in communist China or communist Russia, then we'll have a fight on our hands. It's important to understand that, no, we're in the fight for our lives and the fight of our lives right now. And uh, if we're not aware, then part of what the Lord is doing through these teachings is waking us up and alerting us to the fact that, hey, there's a war going on around you, and if you don't know that, you could become a casualty. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot, basically there's a lot of the work of the ministry to do in front of every one of us. Mm -hmm. And if, if things seem easy or like there's not a, a lot going on, just do more work, and then you'll have you'll recognize quickly that there's a lot to fight for. You're fighting, again, your own flesh and with other people and things like that. So that was a, uh, an important thing to be aware of is that there's, there's lots of um, opportunities to fight. Mm -hmm. And so if things seem a little calm, just stir something up in a good way, taking more ground mm -hmm. uh, for the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. That in and of itself is a fight sometimes, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, to continue to be... Uh, disciplined and diligent and, and steady and steadfast in your, your pursuit of, of, of God, pursuit of righteousness, holiness, when things seem to be going along pretty smoothly mm -hmm. and uh, no, no big troubles. Uh, if things get bad, we understand, okay, we try to ratchet it up, don't we, and get more serious about seeking God. Uh, that's sort of the way people operate. 
right? Yeah. When things are, when the pressure's on, mm -hmm. we get a little bit more diligent. That's not to say that it's a right way of doing things. We just um, have come to recognize that when the pressure's on, we tend to get uh, a little bit more serious, a little bit more committed, a little bit more devout, right? Yeah. yeah, but what if we were that way all the time? We could be growing stronger, should be growing stronger. Amen? Yep. Amen. It's a fight, a fight of faith to be able to, to maintain an uh, active uh, pursuit of God, even in, uh, in times that are uh, relatively calm. What else? If sure, please, minute, jump on in. I wanted to talk about a specific of uh, fighting in relationships. Um, and uh, sometimes when we think of fighting in relationships, we think, oh, well, that's, that's bad. And yeah, sometimes there, there are tension in relationships. Maybe I'll just ask for a show of hands. Who's had any tension in a relationship in the last two days? In the last two days, okay. Marion, have we? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, <laughs> so, several have. And again, I, it's kind of funny as we throw it out, but seriously, if you haven't, are you close enough to people? And I'm not saying that two days, you're supposed to fight every two days. That's not what I'm saying. But well, Where are we but, going with this? <laughs> no, 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 it's, it's, <laughs> Don't, don't hang me up yet. Um, <laughs> sometimes, yeah, it's just, oh, I'll, I'll give that person some space. I'm not close to anybody, and so I don't fight with anybody. Like we say, you know, there's the absence of conflict. And yeah, the guy living out in the woods by himself, he never fights with anybody. Mm -hmm. and, and that's not what we're after here. <clears throat> sometimes there arise problems in relationships. Uh, in horizontal relationships and vertical relationships. So sometimes uh, between you and the person that's over you or under you or alongside of you, you don't like what they said or what they did or what they didn't do or whatever it is. Or we joke about the you thinking what they're thinking and getting upset at them for thinking that you know what they're thinking and all of those things. Whatever the case is, that's uh, another big way in which we do need to fight the good fight of faith. And we could just put our eyes on a couple of the passages that we quote regularly. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. <clears throat> I'm going to read verse 11 first, actually, and then go back to verse 10. He says, It has been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. And then in verse 10, he had said, I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. So everybody do that, and we'll all be okay. <laughs> it's kind of one of those ones where we might say easier said than done, right? Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of work, or in the context of this teaching, it takes fighting. This is a, a major way in which we fight the Christian fight, the good fight of faith, is to en endeavor, and we can put our eyes on that one. I'll flip over to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3. He says, endeavoring, I'll, I'll read right from verse 1, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. You've called to be a son of God, an ambassador for Christ. Act like it. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. There's one body, one spirit, even as you are called and one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. And I would add, so you need to get along. And that's a paraphrase, perhaps, of some other biblical principles, including the one down a few verses in 32, where he says, be kind one to another, right? Mm -hmm. Tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. And so this is something that we've just got to stay after. As long as we're alive there are going to arise these problems, tensions. And sometimes they seem big, sometimes they're small. If you, if you really stay after it, 
they don't need to get too big. A lot of times they get big and boil over because you haven't been fighting. You've been just lying down, so to speak, and not dealing with things. <clears throat> Conduct or, you know, when people do something that you don't like or they don't do something and that bothers you, remember how we deal with it scripturally. If it's a sin, Jesus taught us how to deal with it. You go to your brother and you tell him his fault. And if he hears you, you've won your brother. And if not, then yeah, he gives us some further steps of bringing witnesses and um, if necessary, getting the church involved. But with people who are uh, in pursuit of holiness, that's not often the case. Um, if, if it's a sin, go reprove, expose. Say, hey, brother, you sinned, you need to repent. And Trust the Lord, that brother's going to say, yeah, yep, I, I did. You know, you were the guy uh, at the other end of the aisle, and you saw him take the fishing lure and walk out of the store, and you got you to gotta go to him and you say, hey, man, you stole that thing, and that was wrong. And, and if he says, yeah, you're right, I'm asking the Lord to forgive me, and I'm going to give the fishing lure back, then you've won your brother. Praise God. That's in Matthew 18. Not the fishing lure part, but the <laughs> principles. And then there are sometimes, as we remind I told you that you were supposed to put your fingers in your ears while I told that story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and my reputation before my son has been ruined. Yeah. Tarnished anyways. Yeah. <laughs> and if people, sometimes people do things and they're not necessarily sin. Maybe they do something and you're concerned for them. Go and ask them. Say, hey, you know, I saw you take the fishing lure and you looked. It looked like you didn't pay for it, but did you? Yeah. You know, Score it they say no. I, I walked by the self checkout and I just scanned it real fast and I was out. Okay, cool. Um, and and we joke at, at these analogies, but yeah, you know, hey, the way that you spoke to me or the way that you spoke to that other person or whatever it would be, you know, why'd you say this? Why'd you do this? Go talk to them. Maybe they'll say, you know, you're right. I was. I was being unkind. You know, I asked the Lord to forgive. Me, I ask you to forgive me. Praise God. I, for, some, I forgive you. Oh, thank you. I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. I didn't take any fishing lures. I don't think I did. Because then if I did take them and I forgot, it would almost be like lying and stealing, and that would be really bad. So anyway. You know, don't, don't forget, I can tell these people about your childhood. You can't do that about me, but I can do that about you. <clears throat> This is a true saying and worthy of all of <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> in the interest of ending on time this afternoon, <laughs> I won't start any fights, but sometimes... It's too you, late. I, I know. I know. Dad, Dad I, I would definitely lose. You would win. I would lose. Um, if somebody does something that that you don't like what we're saying the bible says in colossians chapter 3 if there's a quarrel we're to forgive one another um communicate openly express your preference like we said before hey the way that you spoke to me it seemed unkind and maybe your brother says your brother in the lord your sister in the lord man I'm, I'm sorry you heard it that way i wasn't angry at you i wasn't trying to hurt you be mean to you unkind to you ignore you slight you whatever um don't hang on to it but this is the kind of fighting the good fight of faith, fight the Christian fight that um, we we're talking about. It's just another real practical thing, and mm -hmm. we've, we've got to stay after it. Mm -hmm. but when I say stay after it, I mean we must involve ourselves in it. We can't let things build up and boil over. We cannot give place to evil thinking. Sometimes it's just, oh, that's just the way they are. They're just not very diligent, sensitive, whatever it is. If there's enough there to go talk to him about it, if you believe that it's something that the Lord would have you, then go talk to him about it. And if not, don't give any place to uh, hatred, lack of love, withdrawing, uh, any kind of schism in the body, to use the terminology of 1 Corinthians 12. Um, we need to make sure to fight, like Nehemiah 4 says, for our brothers and sisters and sons and daughters and endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace and be perfectly joined together in the same mind and the same judgment. And that takes a lot of uh, just grind it out work. So a reminder that that's a, a big, another big way in which we do fight the good fight of faith. Hmm. Hallelujah. Certainly the, the enemy 
desires to bring division into our relationships, doesn't he? Yep. And it's only by the grace of God that we can all speak the same thing, be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. That's supernatural, isn't it? Amen. And it does genuinely come about in our relationships when we're committed to doing things according to the word of God, according to the provision. That is, we draw on what, what God has provided for us in order to uh, build these relationships. It's a fight. We're selfish by nature. The other guy's the problem. And if it's not the other guy, it is the, 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 the situation or the circumstances, but it's certainly not me. And, uh, and uh, <clears throat> uh, that we need to come to grips with uh, the reality that, uh, that uh, we don't know our own hearts and uh, becoming one uh, takes, uh, takes work, it takes effort, whether it be in, sure, in family relationships or generally the relationships that we have with one another in the body. Fighting the good fight of faith in, in, uh, in, every, in every situation we find ourselves in, uh, in order to keep heart and mind stayed on the Lord and stay on course, uh, walking consistent with his will, it takes, it takes work. It's, it's a fight. And we should consider that our lives are at stake and the lives of those that the Lord has put in our lives are also uh, potentially in jeopardy. They are influenced. They're affected by our decisions, aren't we? So yes, we do fight not only for ourselves, but for those that are around us. And uh, there's the, the promise, the hope of everlasting life. Enduring to the end, you'll be saved. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Amen? You've professed a good profession before many witnesses. You've stood up. You've made your declaration. You're a Christian. And, uh, and God calls you his own. He provides his people with all that they have need of to win this fight of faith. Let's just make sure that we're uh, employing uh, an energy and making every effort to apply ourselves in faith. Amen? Amen. To these things. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do look to you. We continue to look to you in faith for the, the grace and the strength that we have need of to continue fighting faithfully consistently to keep under our bodies and bring them into subjection, to be led and directed by your spirit, to endure, to know your will and to walk it on out, O oh Lord God. We trust you for this grace and we give you thanks and praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Be sure and greet one another in the love of the Lord. God's grace and peace go with you all.